Honorable Speaker, sir, air, air traffic, air traffic has been growing rapidly in the country as compared to global average. 100 more airports would be developed by 2024 to support the Wudan scheme. It is expected that the air fleet number shall go up from the present 600 to 1,200 during this time itself. I propose to provide 1.7 lakh crores for transport infrastructure in 2021. So taking electricity to every household has been a major achievement of this government. However, the distribution sector, particularly the DISCOMs, are under financial stress. The Ministry intends to promote smart metering. I urge all the state and union territories, states and union territories, to replace conventional energy meters by prepaid smart meters in the next three years. Also, this would give consumers the freedom to choose the supplier and the rate as per their requirements. So this is a very important step in reaching electricity to all people. This would give consumers, the prepaid meters, the smart meters, would give consumers the freedom to choose the supplier and the rate as per their requirements. Further measure to reform discounts would be taken. I propose to provide 22,000 crores to power and renewable energy sector for the year 2020-21. So now I come to oil and natural gas. In the upstream sector, oil and gas, the Open Acreage Licensing Policy, OALP, is a success, having awarded 1,37,000 square kilometers for exploration to private sector and to the CPSCs. City gas distribution rights are also awarded. Further, it is proposed to expand the national gas grid from the present 16,200 kilometers. At the moment, it is 16,200 kilometers only. We propose to expand it to reach 27,000 kilometers. To deepen the gas markets in India, further reforms will be undertaken to facilitate transparent price discovery and also ease of transactions. So I come to talking about the new economy now. The new economy is based on innovations that disrupt established business models. Artificial intelligence, Internet of Things, 3D printing, drones, DNA, data storage, quantum, quantum, quantum computing, etc. are all rewriting the world economic order. India has already embraced a new paradigm such as the sharing economy with aggregator platforms displacing conventional businesses. Government has harnessed new technologies to enable direct benefit transfers and financial inclusion on a scale like never before. It's now a cliche, data is the new oil. And it is true that analytics, fintech, and internet of things are changing the way we deal with our lives. To take advantage of this, I propose to bring out soon a policy to enable private sector to build data center parks throughout the country. Building data center parks throughout the country. It will enable our firms to skillfully incorporate data in every step of their value chains. Our vision is that all public institutions at the Gram Panchayat level, such as Anganwadis, health and wellness centers, government schools, PDS outlets, post offices, and police stations will all be provided with digital connectivity. So, the fiber to home FTTH connections through Bharat Net will link 100,000 gram panchayats this year itself. One lakh gram panchayats this year itself will be connected to the optical fiber FTTH program. It is proposed, therefore, to provide 
6,000 crores to Bharat Net program 2020-21. We need to expand the base, of, base for knowledge-driven enterprises. Intellectual property creation and protection will play an important role. Several measures are proposed in this regard, which will benefit the startups. A digital platform would be promoted that would facilitate seamless application and capture IPRs. Also, in an institute of excellence, a center would be established that would work on the complexity and innovation in the field of intellectual property. Honorable Speaker, sir, knowledge translation clusters would be set up across the different technology sectors, including new and emerging sectors. For designing, fabrication, and validation of proof of concept, and further scaling up technology clusters, harboring such test beds and small-scale manufacturing facilities would be established. Mapping of India's genetic landscape is critical for next generation medicine, agriculture, and for biodiversity management. To support this development, we will initiate two national level science schemes to create a comprehensive database. The government proposes to provide early life funding, including seed fund, to support ideation and development of early stage startups. So critical to our quantum technology, quantum technology is opening up new frontiers in computing, communications, cybersecurity with widespread applications. It is expected that a lot of commercial applications would emerge from theoretical constructs which are developing in this area. It is proposed to provide an outlay of 8,000 crores over a period of five years for the national mission on quantum technologies and applications. India would probably be the third biggest and pioneering nation if we are able to break into this technology of quantum technology related to computing and other applications. Sir, I come to the third thing. तो बुलेट ट्रेन प्रोजेक्ट पर तेजी से काम होगा आपको बता दें कि वित्त मंत्री निर्मला सीतारमण बजट पर एंड टूरिज्म एंड आल्सो ऑन एनवायरनमेंट एंड क्लाइमेट चेंज विमेन एंड चाइल्ड एंड सोशल वेलफेयर सर आई एम प्लीज टू इन्फॉर्म द हाउस दैट बेटी बचाओ बेटी पढ़ाओ हैज ईल्ड ट्रेमेंडस रिसर्च ग्रॉस एनरोलमेंट Sir, sir, if you hear the data, if you hear the data, I think it's important not to politicize issues related to women. Beti bachao, beti padao has yielded tremendous results. Gross enrollment ratio of girls across all levels of education is now higher than boys. At elementary level, at elementary level, it is 94.32 percent as against 89.28 for boys. At secondary level, it is 81.32 percent as compared to 78 percent for boys. At higher secondary level, girls have achieved a level of 59.70. compared to only 57.54 percentage for boys so girls are actually under beti padhao benefiting from the scheme health of mother Nutrition is the critical component of health. To improve nutritional status of children, zero to six years, adolescent girls, pregnant women, and lactating mothers, our Prime Minister launched. 
reached a portion of beyond oh. in 2017-18. More than 6 lakhs Anganwadi workers are equipped with smartphones to upload the nutritional status of more than 10 crore households. Sir, Honourable Speaker, sir, for the benefit of those who may not have heard this line, because it's very important, I'd like to repeat it. To improve the national nutritional status of children, children in zero to six years of age, adolescent girls, pregnant women and lactating mothers, our Prime Minister launched a portion of Bihar in 2017-18. More than six lakh Anganwadi workers are equipped with smartphones to upload the nutritional status of more than 10 crore households. The scale of this development is unprecedented. So the next is, women's age of marriage was increased from 15 years to 18 years in 1978 by amending erstwhile Sharda Act of 1929. As India progresses further, opportunities open up for women to pursue higher education and careers. There are imperatives of lowering MMR, maternal mortality rate, as well as improvement of nutrition levels. Entire issue of, of, about age of girl entering motherhood needs also to be seen in this light. I propose to appoint a task force that will present its recommendations in six months' time. I propose to provide 35,600 crores for nutrition-related programs for the financial year 2020-2021. So in continuing with our government's commitment to welfare of women, this budget provides for about 28,600 crores for programs that are specific to women. Our government is determined that there shall be no manual cleaning of sewer system system or septic tank. Suitable technologies for such tasks have been identified by the Ministry of Housing and Urban Affairs. The Ministry is working with urban local bodies for the ado adoption of these technologies. We will now take this to its logical conclusion. We will now take it. Minute, one. To मैं सभी मान्य सदस्यों से आग्रह करूँगा आप वो बजट पर पर्याप्त समय और पाए आप तो उस सब दूँगा उस समय आप बोलना और दादा विशेष रूप से आपको बोलने की प्रमिशन दूँगा। Thank you, sir. No. Thank you, speaker, sir. We will now take this. We will now take this to its logical conclusion through legislative and institutional changes. Financial support for wider acceptance of such technologies will be provided. In furthering this government's commitment towards the welfare of scheduled caste and other backward classes, I propose a budget provision of about 85,000 crores for 2020-21. For scheduled caste and other backward classes, I repeat, I propose a budget provision of about 85,000 crores for 2020-21. In furthering the development and welfare of scheduled tribes, sir, I, provo I provide in the budget for the year 2020-21 an amount of 53,700 crores. For scheduled tribes, I repeat, we provide 53,700 crores. This government is mindful of the concerns of senior citizens and divyang. Accordingly, an enhanced allocation of about 9,500 crore is being provided for 2020-21. So now I move to the second of the third topic theme that I have, which is culture and tourism. Our government proposes to establish an Indian Institute 
of Heritage and Conservation and the Ministry of Culture. It shall have the status of a deemed university to start with. Acquisition of knowledge in disciplines such as museology and archaeology are essential for collecting and analyzing scientific evidence of such findings and for dissemination through high-quality museums. Currently, lack of trained manpower is a handicap for both these disciplines and therefore it also has a negative impact on tourism. Five archaeological sites, five archaeological sites would be developed as iconic sites with on-site museums. They are Raki Ghadi, Haryana, Hastinapur, Uttar, Uttar Pradesh, Shiv Sagar in Assam, Dola Vira, Gujarat, Adi Chanalur, Tamil Nadu. I repeat, five archaeological sites would be developed as iconic sites with on-site museums. They are Raki Gadi, Haryana, Hastinapur, Uttar Pradesh, Shiv Sagar, Assam, Dola Vira, Gujarat, and Adi Chanalur in Tamil Nadu. Our Prime Minister in January 2020 announced recuration of the Indian Museum in Kolkata, which is the oldest in the country. In the historic old mint building, Kolkata, a museum on numismatics and trade will also be located. Four more museums from across the country shall be taken up for renovation and recuration so that a world-class experience can be offered to our visitors. Our government shall also support setting up of a tribal museum in Ranchi, Jharkhand. So I spoke about the Sindhu Saraswati civilization. A maritime museum would be set up at Lothal, the Harappan Age maritime site near Ahmedabad by the Ministry of Shipping. I propose to provide 3,150 crore for Ministry of Culture for the year 2021. Sir, India has moved up from the rank 65 in 2014 to 34 in 2019 in the Travel and Tourism Competitive Index, the World Economic Forum's index. Foreign exchange earnings grew 7.4% to 1.88 lakh crores for the period January to November 2019 from 1.75 lakh crores. From 1.75 lakh crores, it has gone up to 1.8 88 lakh crores. Growth of tourism directly relates to growth and employment. States have a critical role to play. I expect the state governments to develop a roadmap for certain identified destinations and formulate financial plans during 2021 against which specified grants will be made available to the states from the centre in the year 2020-21. For purpose of tourism promotion, sir, I propose to allocate 2,500 crores for 2020-2021. So I now move to the third under this theme, environment and climate change. In September 2019, the Prime Minister has launched the Coalition for Disaster Resilient Infrastructure with its Secretariat in Delhi. This global partnership is the second such initiative, international initiative, after the launch of, as members would recall, after the launch of International Solar Alliance. That was in 2015. This global partnership will help in addressing a number of sustainable development goals, as also the aims of Sendai framework. It will enhance climate change adaptation with a focus on disaster resilient infrastructure. India submitted its nationally determined contribution under the Paris Agreement in 2015 on a best effort basis, keeping in mind the development imperative of our country. 
its implementation effectively begins from 1st January 2021. Our commitments as action will be executed in various sectors. Honorable Speaker, sir, I interrupt here only to say this is a very important point because a lot of our commitments which have been given in the Paris Climate Change Conference on best effort basis will start kicking in from 1st January 2021. Our commitments as action will be executed in various sectors by the departments and ministries concerned through a normal budget process. They will do it through the normal budgeting process. There are, however, yet thermal power plants that are old and their carbon emission levels are very high. For such power plants, we propose that utilities running them would be advised to close them if their emission is above the preset norms. The land so vacated can be put to alternative uses. In large cities having population above 1 million, clean air is a matter of concern. I'm sure a lot of our members will be keen to know about what steps are being taken for cities and clean air. The government proposes, Honorable Speaker, to encourage such states that are formulating and implementing plans for ensuring cleaner air in cities above 1 million. Parameters for the incentives would be notified by the Ministry of Environment, Forests and Climate Change. Allocation for this purpose is 4,400 crores for 2020-2021. So there is something which, before I move to talking about governance, because the three themes that I put before the members is coming to a close. I fall back on the wise words of Thiruvalluvar. And this, it's very important, sir. We've heard several words of wisdom from Thiruvalluvar. Thiruvalluvar has spoken about what a good country is. What a good country is actually got to be like. And what makes up for jewels of a good country. I first read it in Tamil, then I'll give you the meaning. Pini in my selvam vilai inbam emam. Pini in my selvam vilai inbam emam. Ani enba natin vaindu. Ani enba natin vaindu. There are five what Thiruval verses which are jewels for a good country. The first is pini in mind, meaning you, the country will have to be without epidemics or illnesses, major illnesses. The second, he says, it should be wealthy. It should have wealth. It should have wealth. It should also have velachal, in the sense from the fields it should have good crop. It should have inbam. It should have happiness. It also should have amam, which is security and safety of the country. <laughs> Sir, the five jewels, five jewels, pini in my, selvam, vilaibinbam, amam, and inbam. Prime Minister Modi, Prime Minister Modi, Ayushman Bharat, Ayushman Bharat for health for all, is penny in mind. Selvam. Wealth creators will be respected in this country. Wealth creators will be respected in this country. Selvam. Vilaisal. Having good crops. Farmer PM Kisan. Doubling of income. Use of fertilizers and proper growth leads to surplus in horticulture, surplus in Silhan, surplus now probably also in Dalhan. So the Prime Minister's program at health, at creating and giving respect for wealth creators and improving agricultural output and looking at ease of living, bringing happiness to people. And above all, the fifth, Amam, 
This country's national security. You have enough proof to say national security is the top priority of this government. <laughs> Sir, I wish to inform this August House that robust mechanism is in place to monitor the health of all scheduled commercial banks and that depositors' money is absolutely safe. I wish to underline this point, sir, that this August should know, this August House should know that robust mechanism is in place to monitor the health of all scheduled commercial banks and that depositors' money is absolutely safe. Further, further, the Deposit Insurance and Credit Guarantee Corporation has been permitted to increase deposit insurance coverage for a depositor which is now standing at 1 lakh of rupees to 5 lakh per depositor. Sir, the insurance cover for a depositor is at 1 lakh now. Now we are raising it to 5 lakh for each depositor. So to strengthen the cooperative banks, amendments to the Banking Regulation Act are proposed for increasing professionalism, enabling access to capital and improving governance and oversight for sound banking through the RBI the limit for NBFCs to be eligible for debt recovery under, under the securitization and reconstruction of financial assets and enforcement of security interests under the Surface Act 2002 is proposed to be reduced from 500 crores to asset size 100 crores only or loan size from existing 1 crore to 50 lakhs. Therefore, we feel many of the small NBFCs which can come for debt recovery would be far easily done for smaller uh, companies. In the last few years, the government has taken concrete steps to bring our banking system to be robust. However, there is a need for greater private capital. Accordingly, it is proposed to sell the balance holding of Government of India's IDBI Bank to private retail and institutional investors through the stock exchange. There is a need, sir, to take further steps to bring in transparency and greater professionalism in public sector banks. The government will take appropriate measures towards this end. So to help easy mobility while in jobs, we wish to infuse into the universal pension coverage with auto-enrollment. Also, we wish to place such mechanisms which can enable interoperability and provide safeguards for the accumulated corpus. Regulating role of PFRDAI, which is the pension regulatory body, requires strengthening. Necessary amendments would be carried out in Pension Fund Regulatory Development Authority of India Act that will also facilitate separation of NPS trust for government employees from the PFRPAI. This would also enable establishment of a pension trust by the employees other than from the government. I am confident that this will motivate citizens to plan for their old age. So this section which I will now speak will relate to the MSMEs. MSMEs are vital to keep the wheels of our economy moving. They also create jobs, innovate, and also risk takers, and they are risk takers. Several measures for the MSMEs have been taken in the past few years. There are more steps proposed in this budget also. I propose to make necessary amendments to the Factor Regulation Act 2011. This will enable NBFCs to extend invoice financing to the MSMEs through treads, thereby enhancing the economic and financial sustainability. Working capital, the credit remains a major issue for the MSMEs. It is proposed to introduce a scheme to provide 
subordinate debt for entrepreneurs of MSMEs. This subordinate debt to be provided by banks would count as quasi equity and would be fully guaranteed through the credit guarantee trust for medium and small entrepreneurs. The corpus of the CGT MSC would according, uh, accordingly be augmented for, by the government. More than 5 lakh MSMEs have benefited from restructuring of debt permitted by RBI in the last year. The restructuring window was to end on 31st March 2020. Government has, has asked RBI to consider extending this window till 31st March 2021, one more year, so that whoever wants, they can go and approach. An app-based invoice financing loans product will be launched. This will obviate the problem of delayed payments and consequential cash flow mismatches for the MSME. Many mid-sized companies are successful domestically, but not in export markets. For selected sectors such as pharmaceuticals, auto components and others, we propose to extend hand-holding support for technology upgradations, R&D, business strategy planning and so on. A scheme of 1,000 crore rupees will be anchored in the XM Bank together with the SIDB. Both these institutions would contribute 50 crores each. This 100 crore would be achieved towards equity and technical assistance. Debt funding of 900 crores from banks would be made available. Sir, so financial markets, I would like to give a few of the major steps and initiatives being taken by the government for the financial markets. Last year in my budget speech, sir, I had mentioned about deepening the bond markets. To achieve the aspirational growth rate, we would require flow of capital in our financial system. A lot of work has been done on this in consultation with the RBI. Honorable Speaker, sir, I am pleased to inform this House of the developments. Certain specified categories of government securities would be open fully for non-resident investors, apart from avail being available to domestic investors also. The limit for FPI in corporate bonds, currently at 9% of outstanding stocks, will be increased to 15% of the outstanding stock of corporate bonds. To improve investors' confidence and to expand the scope of credit default swaps, we propose to formulate a legislation to be placed soon before this House for laying down a mechanism for netting off financial contracts. The debt-based exchange traded fund, the ETF, recently floated by the government was a big success. Government proposes to expand this by floating a new debt ETF consisting primarily of government securities. This will give retail investors access to government securities as much as giving an attractive investment for pension funds and long-term investors. So to address the liquidity constraints of the NBFCs and the HFCs, this was very much talked about between July and December last year, sir, 2019. Liquidity constraints was very frequently mentioned to us. So to address liquidity constraints of the NBFCs and the housing finance corporations, post the union budget 2019-20, the government formulated a partial guarantee, credit guarantee scheme for the NBFCs. To further the support of providing liquidity, a mechanism would be devised. Government will offer support by guaranteeing securities that are so floated. Infrastructure financing. Government's commitment for investment in infrastructure was reiterated when 103 lakh crore national infrastructure pipeline products were announced. I would also like to inform that about 22,000 crores of rupees has already been provided as support for infrastructure pipeline 
On December 31st, if honorable members would recall, a national pipeline consisting of more than 6,500 projects were announced. 22,000 crore has already been provided as support to infrastructure pipeline. This would cater for equity support to infrastructure finance companies such as the IIFCL and a subsidiary which is of NIIF. So two institutions, IIFCL and the subsidiary of NIIF ticket. They would leverage it as permissible to create financing pipeline of more than one lakh crores. This would create a major source of long-term debt financing for infrastructure projects and fulfill a long-awaited requirement. So the IFSC Gift City has the potential to become a center of international finance as well as a center for high-end data processing. Gift IFSC has an approved free trade zone for housing vaults. It already has 19 insurance entities, 40 banking entities. It has also provided for setting up of precious metals, testing laboratories for them, and refining facilities also. With the approval of the regulator, Gift City would now set up an international bullion exchange in Gift City IFSC as an additional option for trade by global market participants. This will enable India to enhance its position worldwide, create jobs in India, and will lead to better price discovery of gold. Sir, in the recent years, there has been a surge in trading volumes of Indian rupee in the offshore financial centers. The government and the RBI has taken various measures to permit rupee derivatives to be traded in the International Financial Services Center at Gift City, Gujarat. So just a very quick word on disinvestment. Listing of companies on companies' stock, exchange, uh, stock exchanges brings discipline, and it disciplines the company and provides access to financial markets and unlocks its value. It also gives opportunity for retail investors to participate in the wealth so created. The government now proposed to sell a part of its holding in the LIC by way of initial public offer. Initial public offer. The fiscal management. The 15th Finance Commission. The 15th Finance Commission has given its first report pertaining to financial year 2020-2021. In the spirit of cooperative federalism, I am pleased to announce that we have in substantial measure, <coughs> we have in substantial measure accepted the recommendations of the Commission. The Commission would submit its final report to the President during the latter part of the year, for five years beginning 2021-22. It is decided to transfer to the GST compensation fund balances due, to, due out of the collection of the years 2016-17 and 17-18 in two installments. Here and after, transfers to the fund would be limited only to the collection by way of GST compensation sets. A fundamental overall of centrally sponsored schemes and central sector schemes is necessary so that we can align them with emerging social and economic needs of tomorrow and to ensure that scarce public resources are spent optimally. Recently, there has been a debate over transparency and credibility of the projected fiscal numbers. Let me assure the House that the procedure adopted is compliant with the FRBM Act. This is also consistent with the practices hitherto followed. However, for greater clarity, however, for greater clarity, I have enumerated those central government debt that are not part of the market borrowing and are used to fund the expenditure at the annex. I like to repeat this line, sir.
I like to repeat this line, sir, for greater clarity, for greater clarity, I have enumerated those central government debts that are not part of market borrowing and are used to fund the expenditure at the annex. Servicing of interest, servicing of interest and repayment of these debts, servicing of interest and repayment of these debts as hitherto done are done out of consolidated fund of India. So now I come to some numbers. Revised estimates of expenditure for the financial year 2019-20 are at a level of 26.99 lakh crores and the receipts are estimated at 19.32 lakh crores. We have estimated nominal growth of GDP for the year 2020-21 on the basis of trends available at 10%. for year 2020-21 on the basis of trends available at 10 percent. Accordingly, accordingly, receipts for the year 2020-21 are estimated at 22.46 lakh crores and keeping in mind commitment of the government towards various schemes and the need for improvement of the quality of life, level of expenditure has been kept at 30.42 lakh crores. Sir, during the year, government has unfailingly worked towards keeping up capital expenditure. Actually, there is substantial enhancement. All the flagship schemes of the government have been fully provided for. Details may be seen in the annexes to the printed copy of my speech. Every budget must appropriately address the issue of fiscal deficit. Every budget must appropriately address the issue of fiscal deficit. Recently, government has undertaken very significant tax reforms for boosting investment. However, expected tax buoyancy will take time. We estimate, we estimate a fiscal deficit of 3.8% in RE 2019-20 and 3.5% for BE 2020-2021. This estimation is consistent with the government's abiding commitment to macroeconomic stability and it comprises of A, 3.3 for year 2019-20 and 3 for the 2020 2021 budget estimate, 